All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over how we can create this settings fragment in Android Studio. And it's going to be using the settings component from Android Jetpack. And let's just jump right into it. So the first thing I want you to note is that we have a home fragment with all these details displayed and we have a settings floating action button. So when we tap on that, you will see that we have a bunch of settings we can go through. And the first one is our signature. So let's just demonstrate that we can change that by typing in Federico and tapping on OK. And then we have another button over here. So if we click on that, we will have a few radio buttons that we can click on and we'll tap on reply to all. And then we have a few switches under the sync category and we can choose to turn it on and off. And if this one's turned off, this will also disable the one below, but we can freely change those as we please. And finally, we have a notification section where we can change the volume. So let's just change that to 87 and let's enable notifications. And as you can see, the text down here changes as we switch the switch. And when we go back to our home fragment, you'll see that all the values were updated. And you may be thinking, simple, you probably just used a view model with some live data. Well, it's even much simpler than this. The settings fragment actually provides us with a default and pre-made shared preferences. All we have to do is retrieve the key to use these values. They update automatically as soon as we switch them. So for example, if we switch back to Code Palace, you'll see that on our home fragments, it will be updated as soon as we change it. So sync was set to false and Code Palace was changed from Federico. And that's why this settings fragment is so great. It's very easy to use, it looks great, and yeah, that's actually all the reasons there are to use it. But let's go ahead and create this project. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new Android Studio project and go to our Gradle scripts folder and click on build.gradle because of course I have one dependency that I want to add. And this has nothing to do with the settings fragment, but it will help us with the navigation. And this is for the navigation components. And this also requires that we add some compile options. So we will add that right below the build types. And I will include all of this in the description below. Otherwise you can just copy it from my GitHub repository because I will also create one of those. And that will also be linked in the video description down below. So let's go ahead and click on sync now and wait for this to sync. Perfect. And the next thing we want to do is close this Gradle scripts folder and open the res folder or actually we can just right click on the res folders and create a new Android resource file, which is going to be for our navigation. So we're just gonna call it main underscore nav, and we are going to change the resource type to navigation and click on okay. And then the first thing to do in here is to go ahead and click on this plus symbol and create a new home fragment. So we'll click on create new destination and click on a blank fragment and just rename this to home and then click on finish and it will add it to our canvas. Then immediately after that, we can go and click on the plus symbol again and we will create another new destination. But this time we are going to use a pre-made one, which is called the settings fragment. So let's just click on that. It's already called settings fragment, which is great. And then click on finish. And you will also notice that it will have created a new folder for us. And this is the XML folder for our root preferences, which are our settings. And we will go over that in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and add the new settings fragment to the canvas. So we have to click on it and drag it here and connect the two to each other. So there we have established a navigation in our app. And right before we leave this canvas, we are going to go to the split view and we are going to change the labels of each one. So it looks a bit nicer in our action bar. So as you can see for the first one, for home fragment, we will just type in home. And for the settings fragment, we will go ahead and just remove the fragment part. So it just says settings. And that will take care of everything we have to do in the main underscore nav XML. Next, we should go to our layout folder and open that and click on activity underscore main XML and remove this hello world text view because we need to go to our palette and search for a nav host fragment. And we can just drag that in. And as you will see from our navigation folder, we have this main underscore nav navigation, which we can insert right in here. And it already has inserted our first fragment, which says hello blank fragment. So that means it is working and that is great. And we are going to change the width and height to match parent. And finally, we are going to change the ID to main underscore fragment because it's quite annoying if it's just named fragment that can refer to a lot of different things that will confuse us. So it's very nice to be a little bit more specific when you name these kind of things. But anyway, the next step is to go to our drawable folder and we have to create three icons. So we'll just go to new vector assets and then we will click on clip art. And the first thing we want to search for are the settings. 
So we'll click on OK and we will change this to blue. And click on Next and click on Finish. Then we can go and right click and do the same thing again, except this time we're going to search for Messages. Click OK, Next and Finish. And then finally, there's only one more and that is for the notifications. So we'll go in here and type notification and click on the notification. Click Next and click on Finish. And that will take care of the drawables we need for this project. Then we can go to our fragment underscore home XML and click on the split view. And inside here, I'm just going to paste in my previous layout and just explain very briefly what it is and what it does. So the first thing I want you to note is that I have a relative layout and inside the relative layout, I inserted a floating action button, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And I gave it an ID of fab underscore settings and I assigned it the drawable of IC baseline underscore settings as well, which is our setting symbol. Then right below we have a linear layout, which has the orientation set to vertical and center and parent set to true. And then we have four text views. The first text view is for our signature and it has an ID of TV underscore signature. Then we have a reply text view with TV underscore reply and then a sync text view with a TV underscore sync. And finally, a notifications text view with TV underscore notifications as its ID. And those are the only important parts you should note in this tutorial. The rest you can just modify as you please. Next, we have a progress bar at the bottom and this will take care of the volume control or the volume display and I named it PB underscore volume and it has the style of progress bar style horizontal. And finally, the last thing to note is that I gave it a max value of 100. And that's actually all we have to do in our home fragment XML because all we want to show is that we can update these text views and we can update the progress bar and that we have a button to go to the settings fragment when we need to. But next we are going to go to our root underscore preferences, which is located in our XML folder and click on that. All right, so now in our root preferences, we are going to go ahead and click on the split screen. And as you may have noticed, we already have some default implementation of some preferences, such as the signature and the default reply action, and also to sync our email periodically or download incoming attachments. And there are already a few categories such as messages and sync. So this is what comes with the pre-made settings fragment. I'm just going to go over what these are, and then we are also going to add our very own categories and preferences. So the first one you need to notice is that this is all wrapped inside a preference screen. So that is the wrapper that tells the application that this is going to be the place that we are going to insert some preferences. And that will allow us to insert some preference categories along with some preference views. And a preference category is going to be the holder of a certain group of settings, such as your signature and the default reply action. So you can relate these and you can put them under certain categories where you want them to be found. So it will just ease the search experience for the user. And as you can see, we have a title of messages, but we also want to include our message icon. So we can just type in app icon and include it and it will pop up after a few moments. Then the next thing that was inserted was an edit text preference with an app key, which is going to be the key that is used for our shared preferences. So make sure that this key is unique and that you'll be able to call it if you only want to retrieve this value over here. And then there's a title, that says your signature. And of course you can use a string resource or you can just type in your own right here. And then we have this attribute that says use simple summary provider. And that just provides us with a default summary such as not set if we have no value inserted. You can see if we remove this, it will get rid of that and nothing will happen. Otherwise, if you want to implement your own custom summary, just go ahead and type in summary and it will allow you to type in whatever summary you want. But for this condition, it's perfect to have the simple summary provider. And up next, we have the list preference, which allows us to pick a default reply action. And if we go back to the app, you'll see that if we click on settings and we click on this, it will present us with an array of options and a few radio buttons that we can select. And once we click on it, it will select that option. So what you need to note here is that we have a default value and this, and this will be the default value if none of the options are selected. And that's important if you must have the user select an item. And then we have entries and entry values. And as you can see, they've inserted two different arrays. And for entries, these are going to be the titles that appear when you click on it. You'll see it says reply, reply to all, reply to none. These are the entry titles. And then we will have the entry values, which means once we click on one of these, such as reply to all, and we go back, you'll see that it will insert that value to our main fragment. So that is the actual value that gets sent back to the fragment. So as you can see, we have these two arrays and those can be edited just by going to values and clicking on the arrays. 
you'll see that we have reply, reply to all, and then reply and reply all. And it's very important that you have the exact same amount of reply entries as you do reply values, because if one is missing, then it won't know what to assign to that reply entry. So for example, let's just create a new one. We're going to say uh, extra, and we are going to create an item in reply values, and this is going to be the return value. So it's going to be extra. So as soon as we select the option extra, it's going to output this extra to our home fragment. And the key for this is reply. So that's going to be the key value pair that we need to keep in mind when we refer to it. Then we have the title of default reply action. And finally, it also uses a simple summary provider. So if there's no value set, it will say not set. Although for this, it's not really necessary because there will always be a value set, but it's always good to have this if you want to skip out on making custom summaries. The next preference category we have is the sync one, and this will take care of the syncing. So as you can see, this is one category and this one will be the next. And here I'm just going to go ahead and add the settings icon. I mean, it would be more appropriate to have a syncing icon, but I think settings will work just as well. So for now, we'll just leave that there. And you will see this time they decided to use a switch preference compat. And this attribute will allow you to create a switch that can be activated either to true or to false. And all it has is a key that says sync and a title that says sync email periodically. So that one was straightforward. And then to expand on this demonstration, we also have another switch preference compat, but this one is dependent on this switch over here. And you can see that we can become dependent on it just by referring to the key that we used in our previous switch. And that means that if this one's on false, this one will be disactivated. So this really depends on this being activated for this to be available. And then we gave it a key of attachment. And finally, the last two things I want to introduce to you are the summary off and summary on. And these are also very straightforward. If this is activated, the summary on will be activated, which means this text view right here will be presented. Otherwise, if the switch is set to off, we will have this other summary. And let's go back to our application so you can see exactly what I mean. First, let's turn that on. As you can see right now, it says only download attachments when manually requested. And this is the off summary text. But if we activate it, you'll see the text will switch to the on summary text. And that's really neat. And finally, I have one more section that I want to add. And this one will be handwritten so you can actually see how it works to add new preferences. So we'll type in preference category and it's going to take a title of notifications and an icon of our notifications. And let's just tidy that up. And finally, we can open up this block so we can actually insert some more items inside. And the first one we want to add is a seek bar preference. And the first thing we have to do is give it a key. So we're just going to call it volume underscore notifications. And then let's give it a title of volume. And we also want to show the seek bar value so people can see exactly what amount they are inserting. So we'll type in true. And at the bottom, we will give it a default value of 50. And then we can close that. And as you can see, we created a new category with the volume setting, and it also has the indicator of what value it is set at. And right under, we will add a switch preference compat, which will just create a switch for us. And we have to insert a key, which is going to be notifications. Then a title that says disable notifications. And when the summary is on, we want to say you will no longer receive notifications. Otherwise, if the summary is off, we will write, you will receive all notifications. And then we can close that once again. And this will take care of our settings fragment. And as you can see, everything was updated and now everything looks nice. The only thing that doesn't look that nice are the colors. So let's go real quick to colors and switch that up a bit. So let's change this light blue to a red, change this purple to a red, and change the dark purple to a black. Then we can go back and you'll see everything will update and it will look a bit better. All right, and that's all we have to do in this root preferences XML. Next, we can go to our main activity and set up our action bar with our nav controller. And that's going to take find nav controller and it's going to take our fragment main or our main fragment from our main activity XML. And then we should add on support navigate up, which returns a Boolean. We want to create a value of nav controller, and that's going to be equal to find nav controller, which will take the r.id.main fragment. And right below, we want to return nav controller.navigate up or super on support navigate up. And that's all we have to do in our main activity class. Then the final thing to do in this project is go to our home fragment and actually retrieve the values from our shared preferences. So first, let's get rid of all this random code that the fragment has generated for us. 
and all you should have left is on create view with the return inflator dot inflates. And right below we can type in on view created and get rid of this. And then inside here, we're gonna type in fab underscore settings, which will take our floating action button and set an on click listener on that. And then we will get our nav controller by typing in find nav controller and navigate to our settings fragment, r.id.action home fragment to settings fragment. And then we're going to create a load settings function and create it right below, private function load settings. And the first thing we want to do is create a preference manager. So we're gonna type in value shared preferences is going to equal preference manager dot get default shared preferences. And it's going to take the context as the context. And finally, we're going to go ahead and retrieve the values from the shared preferences. So all we have to do is type in value signature and that's going to equal sp dot get string and it's going to take the key of that preference, which is signature with a default value of nothing. And just in case you're confused of how I got this key, just go back to your root preferences and you'll see that anywhere it says key will refer to the key of the value you're trying to get. So if we're trying to get the edit text value, we will search in our edit text preference, we will see the key, which is signature. And that is the key value pair that we will use for these shared preferences. And the next one is going to be called reply. So let's just go ahead and continue with retrieving these values. So we will type in value reply equals sp dot get string. And I'm just going to enter reply with a default value of nothing. Then we will go ahead and type value sync and that's going to equal sp dot get boolean because this time we are retrieving a boolean of whether the switch is turned on or off. And we are going to refer to its key, which is sync and it's going to have a default value of true. Then we should create another value of notifications and that's going to equal sp.getBoolean and that will check whether we want the notifications to be turned on or off. And we'll type in notifications and it's going to have a default value of false. And finally, the last one to update is the volume. So value volume is going to equal sp.getInteger and we are going to take our volume underscore notifications key and we are going to set a default value to zero. Then the final thing to do is to go ahead and update the text views. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in this bit of code and of course I need to change this to reply but you can see the first one takes the signature text view and updates it with the current signature. Then it takes the TV reply dot text text view and it will update the default reply with the reply and the sync text view will get the current sync and the TV underscore notifications text will be updated to disable notifications with the notifications that we received from here. And finally, we have PB volume dot set progress, which will take the volume that we got from our shared preferences and it will insert it into our progress bar underscore volume. And the reason this is red is because this actually requires API level 24 and above. So we're just going to add at requires API N and we also have to add that on our on view created. And that will take care of the error in our project. And that's actually the final part of this tutorial. So that's all we had to do to get the values. As you can see here, we called our shared preferences then we got the values from our shared preferences and assigned them to different values. And then we use those values to update our text views and our progress bar. And after that, we can go ahead and click on run and see what we have done. Perfect. So as you can see, the application has launched. At the moment, we have nothing that is set to default. So we have zero on the progress bar. We have disable notifications set to false. Our signature is nothing. Our default reply is nothing. And our sync is set to true. Now, what we want to test is if we click on the button over here, you'll see that in our home language, it will tell you that nothing has been put in. And let's just change that to code palace and click on okay. And let's set this default reply action to extra because that is the extra option we have enabled. Set sync email periodically to true. And finally, let's go move this volume key to 89. And also let's disable notifications. Now, when we go back, you'll see that all the values have been updated. But with that being said, as you can see, we created a very beautiful settings fragment and it was very easy to create. It only took a lot of time to explain the XML, but programmatically it took no effort at all. And it actually simplified our life by a lot when it came to creating settings. It looks great, it's very simple, and it's very easy to incorporate. So with that being said, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.